Consider supporting Arkea Soup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Hello, Patrice. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm not too bad. It's the afternoon here, and it's the morning, I believe, where you are. And yes. uh, I've been very eager to chat with you about a wee little computer game that I've been playing recently called Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey. Uh, and specifically, from my background as an archaeologist and uh, uh, with some elements of cultural and evolutionary anthropology, um, in my uh, in my repertoire i've been fascinated by this game not least because someone decided to make a game about evolution so i suppose first of all can you just introduce yourself and how it is that you you started this project of uh or, or how what the, the team started this project of creating a game about human evolution all right uh, so i'm patrice Desley. i'm the creative director and president at panache uh, digital games here in uh, beautiful montreal quebec and uh, been doing game for the last uh, almost uh, 25 years now right look young but uh, i'm not anymore uh, and uh, so uh, I did some games in my past, uh, namely uh, Prince of Persia, The Sands mm -hmm. of Time, and then in 2003 came up with a little ID uh, to make a sequel of Prince of Persia and it became Assassin's Creed. Uh -huh. Then I left Ubisoft uh, back in 2010, joined THQ, didn't go well, and then I started my, my own studio, uh, Panache, uh, in 2014. In 15, uh, we got money to start something. And, uh, and and so I, I knew to start a, a studio and a team that uh, I needed a first game and what would be that game. And mm. uh, as a game designer, what's the most important thing that you need to build first is the main character if you do a third person uh, game, which mm -hmm. I knew we would be uh, doing. And so, uh, and so at first I just designed a, a game about the character in a 3D environment. And then uh, I realized that uh, for people, I was uh, I was the uh, historical game designer. Uh -huh. I was the guy who made game about historical time period. And so I said, "Oh, I need uh, to find a a nice uh, time setting, uh, historically accurate uh, time period." And then then one night I had a flash mm -hmm. about about human evolution and about uh, prehistorical time. Mm -hmm. Where uh, all we had was our body, and, and and to to survive in a really harsh and difficult environment, and it's oh, and let's 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 tell the story of the very beginning of it all when we were in trees and jungle and we, we got down and we stood up in the savanna and let's tell that story. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the game design side, it would fit the evolution of a main character, would fit with the evolution of of humankind, and this is how it all started. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. I suppose there are a few things there to pull apart. So first of all, I've been very much struck by the sense that actually there isn't a main character really, is there, I suppose? Yeah, there's no one hero. It is the, yeah. the species that develops over time. I, I found that intriguing so far, the fact that you have to uh, not think of yourself as a, 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 uh, an assassin, for example, running through the Middle East, uh, knocking off um, uh, contracts. Uh, but also as well, this idea of the body it, i very much enjoyed the fact uh that the game literally i mean it almost literally tells you at the, at the beginning good luck we're not going to give you much help and you are you are given this controller and essentially it feels like and this is this is where i really have to praise the the, the work here it feels like you are learning to control a body by learning what the buttons do and how how to use those different skills it's it's and and the, the way that I the only way I could describe it uh, when I was first trying to talk about this game with someone was that you uh, or rather I often find myself wondering how does someone think without language how how did I think before I knew what words were and it feels like the game is a physical experience of that 
And I was wondering, is that deliberate? Are you, uh, have you deliberately made it not only abstract, but also um, oddly intuitive? It, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to explain, but I guess in that sense, can you explain it? Yes, uh, is it deliberate? Everything that is in the game is deliberate. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, since uh, we're building the entire world, right? That, uh, mm -hmm. And all the mechanics and all the, the, the rule sets and whatnot. But uh, it's funny because, but it's funny. It's part, and it was part of our, of our process and, and, and mine particularly that uh, it's not about playing a video game character. Mm -hmm. It was uh, for me really important that uh, we would put people into the shoes, mm -hmm. uh, no pun intended, but yes, uh, uh, of those characters, mm -hmm. and, and and we have we have all the knowledge inside of us mm -hmm. to try to figure out how the hell did we evolve and how the hell do we survive evolution and, and Africa ten million years ago, but but the, there was also the this this time scale was mm -hmm. really like it would have it would have been I feel a, a bit uh, a strange and weird to to play a character that would go through millions of years mm. right and then we would have had like to to find a narrative device to like an immortal to justify it and and mm. then at the end of the day he said but we're not here talking through Skype because of one dude no we're, no. we're actually here because we were together and the, the, the clans and families and, and community uh, made us survive. So we felt really, not, not really at the really beginning, but uh, really soon in the project that it would be, be more accurate and at the same time more fun if you would play a clan and that's your lineage that would need to survive. And, that, and it's not about saving the world, right, from mm -hmm. a possible uh, bad... Uh, situation or, or the temples or whatever yeah so it, it's not about the hero's journey it's not it's, no. it's, that's not that's not the structure of, of of the game at all and 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 i feel like this is not how we again we got to now we just got to now without even knowing what the hell was going on around us and and that for me was also a big uh, uh, not a struggle, but let's use that word this morning. Uh, of like, my issue was like the Homo sapiens who's got the controller. He knows everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the character that he's controlling doesn't know shit. Yeah. So how can we combine the both? So it's and the way we found it is like through the, uh, I would say the opacity of the explanation of how the game world uh, works. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's con it's it's consistent through the game how the the rule set is, is is working, but I'm not telling you it's for you to to discover because fundamentally the game is asking that question. Hey, Homo sapiens, you think you're on the top, you know, the pyramid of you know, everything? Can you survive yeah. like your ancestors did? And the only way for for you to answer the question is for me not to help you out. And this yeah. is how we we did it. Then uh, for for multiple reason. Uh, the game you played was maybe uh, too vague, and, and and my team is still working to to uh, help people out at the very beginning a little bit more to be a little bit more clearer. Uh -huh. uh, not taking you by the end whatsoever. That's not the purpose of the game, I feel. But just to be, uh, we don't have to be that opaque, and we're working on it right right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I suppose I would say, and, and this is the thing, I, obviously I'm coming at it from a very particular perspective, so I really appreciate the, opa the opacity, but I can also imagine, uh, and frankly it's also reminded me that I am quite a spoiled gamer now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to auto saves and tutorials and all this stuff that helps me to play the game, and it's interesting, in some respects, not only does this feel like uh, you're being put into the shoes of, of, of this other creature, but also, it feels like how it used to, to feel to play games back in the 90s or something, or in the 80s. Oh, yeah, 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 know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much more it's kind of you, play it, you know, sit down and do it. Yeah. Hmm. It's funny you would mention that because, I, you know, that's, that's one of the examples I gave uh, through the process. Uh, it was like, remember when we played the first Zelda? We had no clue, really. Yeah. I remember, like, like the, the map in my mind was so vast and, mm -hmm. and we just figured it out. And, and so 
And, and these days, I feel like uh, we're not used to that anymore. We really used to be a bit uh, baby set when we when we play. Um, and, and again, it's always going back to. But I want you to be those characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and again, those characters didn't know they were in Africa. Didn't know they could leave. Didn't know the size. Didn't know that the sun would come back every morning. And, and so, and, and the yeah. only way for us to do it in the game was to to not telling you and not giving you a mini map and it's not about mission givers it's you're the mission giver uh -huh. and and i know a lot of people were a bit uh, destabilized by it it was like wow okay it's so different and oh, i don't have time for this mm -hmm. and, and but for, for people who actually dig it they were the characters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you mentioned this idea that you actually are learning how to control that character mm. and it, it's it's in fact yeah the control scheme is all about uh, again still like kind of like a, like a puppet that you can, uh, can can you can control and you can actually get good at it for real yeah exactly actually, you're the puppet master yeah precisely and so it it, it 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 feels almost as though at the beginning you are uh experiencing that sensation that maybe deers have when they're learning to walk on their four legs these spindly things it's that kind of thing and I, again i appreciate it and in that sense i i dig it in more ways than one being an archaeologist so um yes. <laughs> so it's 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 good um but i suppose two things come to mind um first of all uh and i'll, I'll ask both and you can sort of consider both so first of all uh how did you go from I suppose a, 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 an initial idea about evolution to actually deciding on a pathway and what the species would look like and how they would develop over time. Presumably there must have been some, some research and consultation there. And secondly, I'm curious, how do you walk the line between uh, between this sort of opacity and also the standard video game or learn it's no so the ability to learn the video game sort of vernacular so for example I, I would use the example of say a red barrel if you see a red barrel in a computer game you know if you shoot it it blows up uh, and an equivalent maybe in this game would be that particular plant over there will help you with a snake bite but you can only figure that out by by doing it so I suppose how how did you decide on the the pathway of the evolution and how did you keep that accurate but also how did that marry up with this the requirements of game design in that sense yeah well, well you have to know the first two years was really about all uh, the learning on our side of of, of what happened hmm. roughly put the beauty of paleoanthropology is I, I feel like it's still a, a really much alive science mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like uh, while we were doing our research like uh, the, in the the official timeline you know it's still changing the, mm -hmm. as soon like as soon as we find something in the dirt it may change the entire timeline because we found on an island something that's not supposed to be there and and some bones somewhere you know homo naledi was uh, officially announced to the world where we were doing uh, the game mm -hmm. uh, as an example so 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 we did our research and uh, you, you know from from 10 million years ago to up to now there's like 20 Two, twenty-three different species mm -hmm. that roam the world, and so we picked the one uh, that would be uh, uh, the most uh, interesting one, and, and then and then we f we filled up some of the gaps, and and then it's it's a matter of making uh, you know taking a decision about what would be the best for the game, so. Uh, so uh, I know for uh, you know that that in general uh, we would be standing up on two legs way earlier than maybe it is in the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then it depends on the player, so it's not on us on, on this side. But we try to you know show a little bit that uh, there's a lot of water, so you could see the character by itself go on, on two legs mm -hmm. on on the on, on some of the branches. Also, he goes by himself on, on two legs so so it was all about gaining the knowledge and then trying to uh, uh, almost uh, forget about it and mm -hmm. put it in the game world and then let the player figure it out mm -hmm. but it was always this fine line you're right between uh, uh, doing uh, something of a uh, interactive object that fits the subject matter and making a video game yeah 
Yeah. Which is, he's got their, but, but the, it's funny that you mentioned Red Barrels as a, you know, a, a convention mm -hmm. in, the, in the game. Well, we have kind of like this. If you follow the, some of the red foliage, you'll get a precious stone. So we kind of have some of the, uh, of the element of, of, uh, of normal game design rules in, in the game world. And, but but it's hidden. It's it's there, and it's all about. At the end of the day, I, I feel like, and I would say that often to the team also, that it's not about what's going on here, really, mm -hmm. ancestors. Mm -hmm. It's it's like you have to go down in the sex chakra. Mm -hmm. It's more about the instinct, and 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 I've been telling that a, a lot in some uh, most of my interviews. Like, if you go in ancestors as a gamer. Mm -hmm. And you think it's gonna be like any other game? You, you, no, it's not. You're gonna, you know, the jungle is there to crush you. <laughs> well, I, 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 no, no, but I, I've seen some people. They just take the controller and like, all oh, right, and they run in the jungle, and then they get killed, and then they're like, oh, what's going yeah. on? What is this game? Well, you, you know, why would you run in a jungle? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Take your time, relax, observe a little bit, and and then you get the flow, and the flow is different. Uh huh. Once uh -huh. you get it. And and I and I feel like you were mentioning the the, the line, that fine line. Uh -huh. uh, and the way I, I I design it is like the game would be really really obscure and really hard and tough if I would ask you to do something and then not helping you out. Yeah. But officially, the game doesn't ask you anything. No, no, that's true. That's true. It's not I mean, like go and kill all the predators of the jungle. No, 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 no. no. You don't well, have to. No. You don't even have to evolve. No, no. I, so, I, mean, I suppose when you when you pause the game, there is a a hint saying, "Imagine how you would help this 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 creature to become a Homo sapien, for example." So there is there is yes. a there's a vague goal there, I guess. Yeah, but I, and I, guess, I suppose I quite like in that sense this idea of because you were talking about color, then I guess next linked into this idea of red barrels um i suppose the, the thing is though red barrels only exist as a as a convention because they appeal to something already within us for, you know, linked with red berries for example or dangerous colors so, so it's interesting how you, you you are still drawing on that but it itself is drawing on on some of these deeper things as well uh i suppose a, a question a follow-up question to that would be uh what have you learned about, or you and I suppose and others working on the game, learned about uh, this relationship between playing a game and the, the structure of a game uh, uh, that, that might be useful in future projects? And so much as, do you think you've learned something about abstraction uh, and how, I suppose, almost the psychology of a game works that, that, that you didn't expect when you went into it, if you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the the sense of of freedom is something that uh, I kind of like touch in my past, but because of the na narrative nature of all the games I've done and in, in, in my previous career, almost uh, the, this idea of like we like that all the stories that the player would uh, write themselves is are is way better than anything I can I can write. Mm, mm. It's so much powerful. Mm. Then mm. when you actually say, okay, I'm setting the objectives, I'm writing the story as we go along, even though there are kind of like small stories, mm -hmm. but the, you know, the, those stories of the time when the elder led two injured, you know, uh, other clan members into the swamp and, and, and you have this action sequence that we didn't write it. Mm -hmm. You played through it, and you and you and you imagine the rest. This is so much powerful. I'm, I'm even though I'm still giving a, a lot of love to ancestors as as we speak. I'm I'm starting my next one, and and this idea of like again, let let the player choose for real mm -hmm. is there. It's it's tough to go back. I remember after I did the first Assassin's Creed, I I could not go back to a later game. No. This idea of open world is so much powerful. Well, we went really, really, really far into that open world mm -hmm. idea of, of and, and letting the player actually pick and choose and create mm -hmm. narrative. Mm -hmm. 
it's even more powerful than just picking like which line I'm gonna say to the other character. But we were lucky because we had characters that didn't speak. Yes. Yeah. Well, and actually, and so, that that that's that. Well, that's something that that that's also I found very powerful about this experience uh, so far. I guess uh, that it's almost like a silent movie. Well, it's almost like a silent movie, but also actually, as so, I'm guessing that you're bilingual at least. Um, I am uh, bi or sort of bi and a half lingual, maybe trilingual. Um, I grew up speaking Welsh and English, and it's interesting to play a game that doesn't require language and actually encourages you again as i say almost to play instinctually you're playing uh, in a way that doesn't have conventional button prompts it doesn't have conventional apart from the occasional thing where it says take maybe take this thing from that person or whatever or swap as uh -huh. you as you learn those skills i find that interesting because i imagine first of all it's easier to market a game that doesn't require localization all the time you know it, it do new languages but also I think there's something quite powerful creativi creati creatively there that I've really enjoyed. Um, just just bringing it back though, just because so, because obviously my particular focus uh, from this perspective is mainly for for example an archaeological angle. Um, I'm curious, what have uh, and let's just take you for example, what what have you learned about human evolution that you didn't know previously? And how and have you and how have you tried to communicate that in this game? Oh, I've learned so much. Eh? It's like I'm not a paleontologist. I can have a, a nice coffee with uh, some of them, and uh, I can follow the conversation quite easily. Uh, but uh, personally, it's, it's like uh, I, I don't know if it's like I've learned, but I through my research to the, of the subject matter, I would say I made some uh, assumption. Uh huh. Uh, first, like I said, like it's it's all about community. Yeah. And and I got I, and I feel like uh, we we're here because we helped each other out. We, mm -hmm. we it's not because we actually beat the shit out of um, everyone else. Mm -hmm. Somehow it's it's us together. Um, and, and this is my in my research. I realized quite you know early that. War, for example, is not something that is in us. Mm. This, 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 this myth of the cavemen who are like violent and and for me it didn't make any sense mm -hmm. as I was studying the subject matter. Like we survive, we react, we defended ourselves, but it's mm -hmm. not about actually conquering land and, and the animal that's why it's the, one of the it's like what you need to conquer is your fear mm. <laughs> that's the thing and that's why we're still are pretty much afraid of everything even though now we control the entire planet and we're destroying it mm -hmm. just to make sure that it won't destroy us <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's true it's like at the end of the day yeah, yeah i see what you mean yep <laughs> and so this is this is something that uh, really you know uh I would say not change me because I was a bit in this vein, but that that is crazy that we think that our ancestors were dumb and, and yeah. violent. Yeah. And, and for me, it's impossible, even though even at the very beginning of it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, so the, this is something I wanted to break the myth. And it's funny. It's what, while I was reading about it, it's like ah, well, why do we have that myth? And it's like ah, oh, I know it's because when we started the field. We were in this mindset mm -hmm. of everything that is not, and I'm sorry, but that is not from England and, and white. It's okay. It's I'm, not from, I'm not from England. I'm from Wales, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, that's it. I get it. Right? But, yeah. but it's true because it's all started in 1850-ish, yeah. you know, in the Victorian era, and, and, and then it was really popular in France, but yeah. the same thing. If you weren't, you weren't like like us uh, you were salvaged so oh yeah. you know and now, and now we're discovering about neanderthals that maybe no and not only maybe but they they had culture and they did some drawings also yeah. and they were really close from us and well and, and I, even I, though ancestors is about the very beginning it's all part of it that's why we didn't make right uh, there's no real difference by playing a male or a female no no well, I, I, I didn't feel like like yeah, we, we would have a really different conversation if we would have gone that, that route. And I'm like, it's not really important at the end of the day. 
No, no. Everybody's there together to survive. And, and, and for me, it's quite sure that the, the man will not go hunt and the woman stay in the cave. For no. me, it's like when it's hunting season, everybody goes. Yeah. We must do something together and everybody will have his, uh, you know, some male are not really meant for hunting anyway and some female not only for gathering. And if you're really <laughs> hungry, everybody would get some uh, some berries, man. Yeah. And, and this idea like uh, of, of always analyzing the past according to our own belief system of now, it, it mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. like a bit... Uh, well, and and it, and it, it is to us of what what happened. Yeah, and, and and it is interesting that 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 is certainly one of the conventional things that, that people draw on is this idea of, uh, especially things like war, conflict, and co as as competition, as being a route that's leading to, as you were pointing out before, this idea of a pyramid that with the, with you know, especially European people on top in the eighteen hundreds. I think that was the thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting how, yes, I mean, so if I, I often talk about prehistory in primary school. Um, one of the things we talk about and it immediately is the fact that they they fairly early on had language, this idea of a knuckle dragging. And frankly, even people living, actually living in caves is something that's an interesting one. Or, or uh, another biggie is uh, is the idea of a stone wheel as well. I always find that to be weird. I find it fascinating how people... Uh, but, but you can't escape it. Like in car adverts, they'll have this sort of the progression of the car and one of them will be a stone wheel. So we live oh. with these myths and it, and it feels as though, and this is one of the reasons why I reached out for this interview, is it feels as though your game is is very much uh, examining and pulling apart some of these, starting, and I, you know, starting so far back that, uh, that you can't bring too many of your own... Uh, current biases with you in so much as it's very difficult to play that game as say as a as a as a as an englishman or a german or a you know an american or a canadian you know, it, 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 you're playing the game as the creature in front of you and you get the opportunity to to become another creature and so on and so forth mm -hmm. i like that I, li I like what it's saying about about the human experience definitely um i suppose uh, just looking at just looking at the time oh, well you're very welcome um thank you for give me the chance to tell you also incidentally as well uh in this house we're big fans of assassin's creed so thank you for that um but just just, just looking at the time uh, you know but uh, coming up to half an hour now but i think just to yeah. draw this to a close um I i'm suppose... sorry i talked too much no not at all not at all no it's been it's been a pleasure uh what would you well no okay two things first of all uh i've heard a rumor that there may well be if this game is popular uh evolutionary games that tackle later human civilizations or later human development maybe into the mesolithic and, the, and farming development this kind of thing so but uh the, the is, is that the case but then the second question is um what do you what would you want people to uh to take away from this experience into their own broader lives because it, it feels as though more than just more than for example a, a zelda game or more than a mario game uh, this is trying to help people think and feel something. So what, what do you want them to think and feel? Well, to answer uh, your first question, uh, I've designed three volumes mm -hmm. about human evolution so the, the, and about the humankind odyssey. So the first one was uh, before us. And then, and then let's talk about, you know, when I don't know if you finish the game, but eventually you'll get to the character that is like, oh, okay. He could be in a, in a crowd with a nice suit and I, uh, he would be uh, unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And so, and then they're all, all the, you know, there was a time when we roamed the world with other species that were not quite us, but really close from us. And eventually I would like to tell the story of us mm -hmm. because this is another fascinating story. You know, as, as, as an archaeologist, we, we kind of find stuff about civilization on the last 15,000 years or so, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we were on this planet for 125,000 years as more than humans, and it's like, wow, that's a really, really big chunk of history. And so that would be nice also to tell, uh, you well, know, those pre-civilization stories. Well, actually, just just to, just to, just, to, just to cut in there a little bit, um, recently the, the number was put back to about 300,000 years. So, See, so that's why you're like... <laughs> uh, well, uh, what, 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 what's, fasc what's fascinating here in terms of the numbers, though, is that if you look at uh, everything from the invention of metal through to the invention of an iPad and Skype, 
that is only about uh, only about what was it? But it was two about two and a half percent of human history. It's yeah. it's crazy. So so in that sense, I it's like the, I like the fact that, that you're dealing with that deep time. Uh, but then secondly, well, yes, yeah, actually, so, I'll tell that story of us that we were like again on this planet and almost not not everywhere on the planet, but almost and 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 I feel like. Again, it's not because we didn't build any pyramids back then, or that we didn't, that that we weren't us. Mm -hmm. That that's really fascinating for me. Mm -hmm. That we had good days and bad days, mm -hmm. and that uh, we had the love affairs, mm -hmm. and we had political struggles inside the clan, and that uh, we may had some conflict with another clan, but most of all we did some trades, mm -hmm. and and that for me is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I would like to tell the, also that story, plus the other one in the middle. You know, yeah. Homo erectus, who was two million years on this planet. Wow, wow, that's the longest of all the hominids. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's going back to, to what we were saying about uh, the game from the 80s and 90s. It's like, it's such an adventure. Mm. <laughs> it's, wow, it's like, it must have, it's, and, and I feel like we have it in us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We kind of get it somehow yeah, yeah. in our uh, genetic memory somewhere, right? That, uh, oh, that, that, uh, that. I, I, sometimes I get really, really goosebumps when I play and I'm with my clan. Everybody's got a stick in the savanna and we're standing up and, and feel like I've been there. Uh -huh. like I understand uh, uh, how it worked and, and whatnot. So, so that's the first part of the, yes, I want to tell the rest. Uh-huh. Okay. First, we, you know, we did the the, the 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 beginning of it all, and then there's still two million years to explore and so, design around. So, so, uh, so, 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 in, so, in some ways, then you're still playing with an animus, really. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and, you know, the animus is the PC now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, this is this I'm really proud because we didn't justify anything. No. No. This one with narrative. This no. is it. Boom. You start. Take yeah. a take a controller and and have fun with it. Uh -huh. So you know, we we I, at first I, I designed the justification of it all and then I said, ah, yeah. it's, it's useless for the subject matter. And what was the second question was what the I think people will get from it. Well, yeah, I suppose I suppose in so much as it feels as though you 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 very you very much crafted an experience that will evoke yeah. emotions well, and and things like that. What what are you I hoping? And without being too, oh, that's my message. <laughs> uh, is is like I feel like we're mutants, uh -huh. and uh, and it really went like exponentially in the last hundred years or even the last twenty years. Like, look, we're talking, you know, with the camera, and you're, mm -hmm. you know, on the other side of the uh, of the ocean, and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we feel that that's normal, and you know. Uh, before this, the, the cam and Skype didn't work, we were like, ah, what are we going to do? And it's magical. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like we're disconnected a little bit from our our ape. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and so I, I hope that some people, while they play the game and, 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 and they finish it or they go really deep into it, they'll say, oh, we're, we're them. Mm. We come from them. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. like we're part of all this, and we're not like on top of it, and and you know, and and so that's my little contribution to the world somehow, and uh, and not only me, but because uh, I have to stay. Uh, I talk a lot with uh, an I, but uh, there's a team, and they, you know, without them, I'm not here talking to you. No, no. And so uh, also they they were really into the mission of telling that story of us. And that's this is what I want people somewhere in Wales, somewhere uh, in Australia, somewhere uh, in, in Brazil, whatever, that that you know they will say, oh, and and we're all the same. We all come from this clan, mm. this lineage, mm. and and we're here playing with the latest tool of them all, which is a computer. Mm. You know, it all started with rock, and now there's this. But that deep down we're still those 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 creatures, mm. which is a fact. Yeah, like uh, I feel like uh, like now that there's no more leopards trying to kill us, we invent those leopards. Yeah, I think I think it's you're tough. right. Yeah, yeah. 
and it, well, that, yeah, it, absolutely. People are far too, aren't very good at defining themselves uh, outside of a framework that requires an opposition. We, te we, te uh -huh. we tend to go, oh, we're not them. They're not us, and yeah, and as you, but yeah, but also as you say, God forbid, we're all human beings. We're all related. It's yeah, it's. I like it. It's like it. I like it. Well, thank you for your time uh, this morning. It's been a real pleasure, and I'll yeah. let, I'll let you get on with making more games. <laughs> thank you very much, sir, and uh, thank you for uh, because. Not everyone got it, and no. I feel like uh, you got it, and that's 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 good. So thank you for having me uh, let, let me have this conversation with someone who got it. It's cool. Yeah.